Dominique, it's so good to be with you. Uh, I'm really grateful to have the chance to connect with you, uh, albeit virtually, uh, to hear about the work that you are doing uh, in connection with UNHCR in, uh, in, uh, in Niger. I know that the situation there is very complicated, but before we dive right in, I just want to say um, how impressed I am by your background. I know that you have a plethora of experience uh, in the public service, but also uh, abroad, uh, working in uh, various uh, agencies and uh, and and branches uh, in connection with the UN, uh, it is truly a source of pride uh, to see uh, a Canadian lead the work of helping to resettle refugees all over the world, um, and in particular in Niger. I know that um, in the last several years that there has been a particular initiative that has been set up to help uh, both. Um, refugees who are coming from Libya, but equally to help uh, internally displaced persons. And I see that the work that you are doing there is a significant piece to a much larger puzzle that Canada uh, plays when it comes to upholding human rights, uh, when it comes to providing safe refuge for the world's most vulnerable work that uh, I get to uh, help shape in my capacity as the Minister for Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship. Um, it goes without saying the last year has been challenging, but uh, to be able to have this conversation with you right now uh, is truly an honor and a privilege. So, uh, bienvenue, Dominique. Thank you so much, and uh, I think the honor is actually mine. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm first of all, I'm really a very proud Canadian for everything uh, that our country does uh, for refugees and for resettling, especially very vulnerable cases. And uh, I'm, I'm so pleased to be here uh, with you today uh, to be able to tell you about what I've been seeing here for the past few days in Niger, uh, uh, where I've been able to travel and meet uh, some of the most vulnerable people on our planet. And we're going to get into that because I know that, um, you know, you have traveled there and you're on the ground and you are seeing with your own eyes the state of the situation. And it's uh, one of a number of areas in the world where uh, people are being involuntarily displaced. And, you know, as I said, um, over the course of the last number of years, um, you know, Canada has contributed in some very unique and historic ways. Uh, whether it's through uh, Operation Syrian Refugee, where we resettled over 70,000 now in Canada um, uh, at, a, at a time when, you know, there were people who were very skeptical, uh, Canadians and our international partners, including at the UN and, and the UNHCR, stepped up to do something quite historic. Um, equally, uh, the work that we've done with um, Yazidis uh, has been uh, incredibly important. Um, recently, I announced uh, an adjustment to that program to allow greater family reunification uh, for survivors of Daesh here. But but tell me more about what you are seeing in uh, in Niger and 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 um, what it is that um, that you see are the immediate issues that not only Canada but the rest of the world should be pay paying very close attention to. Euh, merci beaucoup et, et vous savez, euh, j'étais aussi représentante en Jordanie, donc euh, vraiment ce que le Canada a fait aussi pour les réfugiés syriens et là on est en train de marquer euh, 10 ans euh, depuis que la crise a commencé et je pense que l'appui que le Canada a pu offrir à tellement de réfugiés euh, syriens, c'est extraordinaire. Euh, mais comme vous le dites aussi, aujourd'hui, je, euh, je suis au Niger, euh, où une des crises les plus méconnues au monde et une des urgences euh, les plus terribles, c'est au Sahel, où plus de 3 millions euh, de personnes sont déplacées à cause euh, du conflit. Ici, euh, au Niger où je suis, euh, on parle de plus de 500 000 personnes qui sont ou réfugiées ou euh, déplacées. Et c'est un pays très complexe, c'est un des pays les plus pauvres au monde, donc déjà une population très pauvre, mais un pays qui a aussi montré beaucoup de générosité. Ils ont sept frontières euh, dans le pays, euh, donc, euh, et sept pays qui, en, que ce soit le Nigeria, que ce soit le Burkina Faso, que ce soit le Mali, où il y a beaucoup de conflits internes, et donc ça cause des familles de, à quitter 
leur maison pour venir dans le pays et euh, dans des situations vraiment catastrophiques. Et ce pays, le Niger, a aussi accueilli un grand nombre, euh, un grand nombre de réfugiés. Euh, mais ce qu'on voit maintenant, c'est vraiment un nombre de femmes et d'enfants qui sont de plus en plus impactés euh, par, euh, par ce déplacement. On parle de torture, on parle euh, de, de maisons euh, détruites, on parle de euh, beaucoup de violences faites aux femmes euh, et aux enfants. Euh, donc, euh, je dois dire que ce que, ce que j'ai vécu est plutôt terrible. Mais le HCR est ici, le Haut Commissariat pour les réfugiés, avec lequel je travaille. On, a, on est en train de, de faire tout ce qu'on peut pour offrir une sécurité euh, aux réfugiés, aux déplacés ici dans le pays, que ce soit euh, en leur donnant un abri, en leur donnant de l'eau, en leur donnant euh, des appuis aussi euh, sanitaires. Alors, on est bien sûr ici aussi dans une pandémie euh, avec, euh, avec le COVID euh, et eux aussi sont impactés. Donc, on a pu, euh, grâce à, à, à l'appui de plein de pays généreux, avoir euh, tout ce qui était en termes de savon, euh, d'eau, euh, mais aussi euh, de, de messages de comment se protéger et comment avoir accès à des masques. Euh, et, euh, et aussi, on a dû changer la manière qu'on fait notre travail. Donc, c'est une situation très complexe et dynamique. Et euh, je, je crois que votre rôle là est, euh, est très important. Et le rôle de, de, de l'HCR est essentiel pour, euh, pour euh, appuyer et soutenir tous les réfugiés, les personnes qui sont déplacées de leur maison euh, pour survivre et, euh, et j'espère pour commencer le prochain chapitre de leur vie qui, qui est meilleur. Mais euh, est-ce que vous pouvez expliquer avec un peu plus de détails euh, le voyage des de réfugiés de Libye à, à Niger et même euh, le, le voyage de les personnes qui sont déplace, déplacées au Niger à, à, les, à les camps et les places où vous êtes maintenant? Uh, absolutely. Um, uh, yesterday, I, I met uh, a Eritrean family. They had uh, uh, it's a, a young mother with her two children who had fled Eritrea. They took a boat uh, uh, and a dire situation that they were uh, going through in Eritrea. They went to Yemen by boat, ended up in Sudan to end up by uh, by walking through deserts, walking through uh, just terrible situations where they had no water for days um, and smugglers and get reaching Libya. And in Libya, uh, they were put in uh, warehouses where they were basically kidnapped, uh, first in one warehouse for eight months and then another warehouse for nine months. The mother um, uh, who uh, has now the son who's 19 years old and a daughter who's 15 and will soon be uh, uh, resettled uh, in, uh, in Canada, um, in, in Nova Scotia to be precise, told me her story. And Minister, her story is harrowing. It's just absolutely awful. Uh, she told me about torture. She told me about uh, uh, rape. Uh, and all of this to protect also her children. Um, and what um, and and what I heard was also how she was saved, saved uh, by uh, UNHCR in Libya, and then how she ended up here in Niger uh, with her, her son and daughter, uh, and where they were able, through the support of UNHCR, to get also uh, healthier. Uh, the son wasn't well, was quite ill. Um, and uh, But of course, you can imagine just the trauma, so we also offer mental health support here. But just, you should just see their faces when they knew that they were going to be going to Canada and they could start their life again. And uh, the uh, young, young boy, uh, 18, 19, I asked him what he was looking forward to the most. He's really into sports. He's really into football. And so I said, oh, unfortunately, I said, I don't think Canadians are very good at football. And he said, what? How can you say Canadians aren't good at football? He said, actually, the most famous football player is Alfonso Davies. And uh, he had pictures of Alfonso Davies, who, like him, was a refugee um, from Liberia, who'd moved to Ghana and who got refuge in our country, in Canada, and is now playing for Bayern Munich and one of the most famous football players and also our uh, goodwill ambassador for UNHCR and he was just full of hope and then I turned to his younger sister and she said I just want an education I just want to go to school um, 
And so I can imagine for everybody who's listening to us, um, just uh, for people like that who have gone through hell, and when I say hell, really hell, uh, to know that they can now get security uh, and a future and hope in our country, I think uh, is, is just extraordinary. Well, indeed it is. And the, the details of that journey are, are gripping and, and very difficult. Uh, to uh, to listen to and unimaginable. And I uh, just it really underlines for me how critically important it is uh, that we continue to support uh, the work of the UNHCR there. Your presence there is, I think, a, a, a real validation of that fact. And to be able to express um, really the um, just, you know, how how vital it is that the resettlement efforts uh, abroad continue and Canada's role uh, in resettling refugees uh, is, is really is a second lease on life. It's a chance to offer uh, people who have overcome indescribably difficult um, pain and torture and torment and uh, not just physical, but mental, where we see the dehumanization of people who have been um, really put through hell, as you put it. Um, on the other hand, uh, there is something that uh, I think that uh, is um, redeeming in, in, in what you have just described, and that is a sense of, of hope uh, and optimism that at the end of that difficult journey, uh, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And hopefully uh, many of, of the people that you have seen will be able to come to Canada and follow the example of Alfonso Davies. You know, I am a soccer fan myself. And, oh, really? Uh, well, with uh, Italian heritage in in uh, in my background, uh, it will it may not come as a surprise to you, Dominique, uh, or even some of the viewers that uh, I still watch a lot of Serie A, uh, so which is the uh -huh. domestic Italian soccer league. And I recently <laughs> just did an interview where I got to sing uh, the the song for. Uh, AS Roma, which is my favorite team. Alfonso Davies plays for Bayern Munich. Um, but what makes what makes Alfonso's story, I think, so uh, inspirational is, uh, you know, he talks about uh, how his his journey to Canada, and you know, becoming acclimated here and getting used to the winters. But but none of that uh, posed any uh, 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 thing in the way of a barrier to. Uh, his dreams and indeed, you know, his ability to uh, become a, a world class soccer player uh, is, is something to marvel at. But I think for us, for you and I, who share a passion for helping, um, helping uh, to resettle refugees, his, uh, his now taking on this role as a goodwill ambassador to share that story uh, with people br as broadly as possible will hopefully uh, continue to inspire um, you know, those who are in the, in the, in the deepest, darkest moments to hold on to, uh, to hold on to that sense of hope, but it has to be underscored by the support and the services that the UNHCR is offering. And again, I think this is a uh, really, really important, um, maybe you can just talk a little bit about how important it is that you see that we continue this work when it comes to resettlement efforts, uh, in Niger and more broadly. Well, you know, one thing that's unfortunate with uh, that uh, is, I'd say, a really unfortunate consequence of COVID. You'd hope that with some sort of a pandemic that is as global as and, is, and as impacting as COVID, that it would also help us stop conflicts. Unfortunately, conflicts have continued and haven't stopped because of COVID. And this, of course, um, impacts, uh, impacts all the refugees. And what we see is that resettlement is really a lifeline. It's a lifeline for refugees whose life, their liberty, their safety, their health, or any other fundamental rights have been taken away from them. And they're the ones that are most at risk. Um, and many of the refugees cannot go home. The situation back home is too dangerous, too perilous. Uh, and or they have, in some cases, just specific needs that can't be addressed in their country um, of asylum. 
And so I think what uh, we do uh, at UNHCR together with governments like Canada is uh, find um, a third country where they can relocate, where they can uh, get that hope, where they can rebuild their lives in a safe environment. And I think that's very much what Canada has been able to offer. Unfortunately, uh, we right now uh, at HCR are looking at over 1.4 million refugees who need to be resettled around the world. And last year, we were only able to resettle 22,800 of these refugees. So that's 64% uh, less than the previous year, and that's very much due to COVID. Um, so I think that we need to uh, we need to continue doing this work here uh, in Niger uh, and uh, and more broadly. I couldn't agree with you more. And you know the. The pandemic has really exposed the fragilities uh, in our system, and it has, I think, uh, reminded us that 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 COVID nineteen does not, uh, you know, impact pe people or populations equally, and that among the most vulnerable population are refugees, uh, uh, are internally displaced uh, people, people who don't have access to homes or sufficient shelters or access to many of the critical services which uh, you know we uh, sometimes take for granted access to safe uh, drinkable water uh, access to health care access to education and I will say that that is uh, one of the main reasons why we have fought very very hard in Canada to keep our asylum system functioning and it is you know not lost on me nor is it lost on our government that uh, when uh, you know, my friend Filippo Grande, the UNHCR, uh, came out and said that Canada was a bright light last year uh, at, a, at a very, very dark moment uh, in, our, in our history because, because we were able to continue to resettle uh, some of the most urgent cases uh, around the world. And we were able to do that in cooperation with UNHCR, uh, the IOM and some other really important partners. And, um, you know, my hope is, is that we will continue to show real leadership on the global stage this year as part of our annual immigration plan we are hoping to resettle up to 35,000 refugees but not just that we're also hoping to extend uh, status to protected persons in Canada uh, following their 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 hearing at the uh, immigration refugee board so um, in my mind this is a, a real signal that 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 to the rest of the world that Canada is going to show the leadership that is necessary. Uh, even, as well, even despite the pandemic here, I don't know if, if, if you're aware, but we, we also launched um, a, a, a special pathway for asylum seekers uh, who had contributed uh, in the front lines of our healthcare sector. C'est une initiative uh, qui, qui s'appelle Les Anges Gardiens. Et c'était uh, les, les demandes d'asile qui, qui avaient contribué à un niveau exceptionnel sur les premières lignes de nos hôpitaux et les sèches uh, les, uh, les, uh, les maisons pour uh, nos anciennes. Et, uh, et maintenant, uh, nous avons créé un, 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 un parcours uh, pour, uh, pour permettre ces demandes d'asile pour rester en Canada avec le statut uh, de résidence permanent. Donc, ça, c'est un, un autre exemple de la leadership de Canada où uh, nous, nous, avons, uh, nous avons démontré uh, une, une innovation uh, pour, uh, pour uh, renforcer notre système d'asile. Uh, et, et encore, c'est une extension de votre travail uh, à Niger. Oui, mais écoutez, euh, c'est l'extension du travail ici de l'équipe du HCR au Niger, mais... Euh, il y a une chose qu'il faut que je dise, donc bien sûr, moi, je, 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 je travaille d'habitude de, de, de Genève, mais je, suis, euh, je, je voyage partout dans le monde et une chose que, dont je suis le plus fière euh, en tant que Canadienne, c'est vraiment euh, nos politiques de... Euh, euh, d'asile de, de, et euh, de l'innovation exactement dont vous parlez. Je pense que le Canada a de quoi être fier. On est vraiment un leader euh, quand on, on vient à, aux questions de réinstallation euh, et, euh, et aussi euh, vraiment euh, un 
on voit vraiment euh, l'augmentation euh, et la, la décision d'accueillir euh, plus euh, de réfugiés dans les prochaines années comme euh, un, un, un cadeau euh, venu, euh, venu du ciel en quelque sorte. Um, Canada has an incredible track record uh, when it comes to being uh, successful in integrating refugees. And I meet countries from Sweden to Germany to European countries to others who are all looking at Canada and their leadership in the way that we're also working with the communities in Canada to integrate uh, refugees. And, um, and I think there's so many lessons to be learned. Yesterday, I was at uh, the center uh, where uh, many of the refugees are living while they wait to be resettled in a third country and my colleagues at UNHR were just telling me again another area where Canada had been just an incredible leader and because of COVID obviously you are not able to come here and do a lot of the work in terms of checking on the biometrics on checking in terms of security etc and so a lot of that has been done through uh, uh, a remote uh, way of doing the work, but actually super secure and uh, and uh, incredibly, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, confidential as well, which is very important to our government, uh, the confidentiality of that information and, uh, and of course, always ensuring security. Uh, so I think there's a, we're really hoping to put Canada in touch with other governments so that they can also learn from how you're doing it and how you're innovating and how our communities across our beautiful country are able to actually uh, take in these uh, Canadians who uh, will soon uh, become citizens as well. Well, we uh, are always prepared to share whatever successes, but also to learn from other countries as well who are contributing uh, on the uh, on the world stage when it comes to resettling refugees. One of the first and last trips that I got to take internationally before the world shut down was to Geneva to yes. participate in uh, the first global refugee forum. And, uh, you know, it was a real privilege to be able to uh, to talk about this work, to talk about um, the, the leadership that Canada shows in resettling refugees, uh, to talk about some of the innovative ways in which we are creating new pathways, uh, not only for asylum seekers, but for refugees who possess uh, skills that 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 fit very neatly within our economy in partnership with um, leaders from the private sector. Uh, but one of the main reasons why uh, I will uh, always remember that trip uh, and what truly left an indelible mark uh, for me was welcoming Mustafa Ayello, uh, who himself is a refugee, a Syrian refugee, uh, as a member of our official delegation to the floor of the assembly. And, uh, you know, since then, we have stayed in touch and in contact, and uh, we have uh, continued to fulfill my personal commitment that we will make space uh, for refugees to have a seat at the table in the shaping of policies, uh, in, uh, you know, the understanding of, of uh, the journey of refugees so that they are full participants, uh, that they are not just, you know, uh, there uh, uh, to to be the recipients of, of services and support, but rather to contribute fully. And, you know, to my mind, that is one of the ways in which we address one of the unfortunate stereotypes that refugees are sometimes just a burden to our society. In fact, uh, we know that refugees give back. We know that they contribute. And that is uh, one of the overarching messages that, uh, that I, I continue to believe very firmly in as we do this work together. What's your message to Canadians um, uh, in, for the future? Well, what is, what is your vision about, uh, about uh, Canada's role in, in, in the world of, of resettlement and in the world of uh, offering sanctuary to uh, those who are persecuted, those who uh, you know, have, have been forced out of their own homes to, to find a better life? 
Thank you. Uh, I think, um, you know, I think the first time actually we met, uh, I was with the High Commissioner and it was at the at the Global Forum and it was absolutely impressive how Canada came to the Global Forum and for all of our audiences who are listening to this, this was this was an agreement, this was a compact between governments around the world, between the private sector, between civil society, individuals to really look at having many more populations supporting each other. I mean, in many ways, uh, you know, I, I, I truly believe uh, that if it was today that we were going to sign the Human Rights Declaration, I think we would have a lot less governments that would be signing it, and that would be truly sad. But we saw at this Global Compact was actually so many governments coming together, the private sector, uh, a much more holistic approach to our response to uh, to refugees. And in Canada, I guess, you know, you, you said it, you're an please keep on doing this because this is something we forget we and uh, we often forget is that refugees have a voice refugees have so much to contribute and we need that to continue there is so much xenophobia around the world and uh, uh, and the more we can do and the more canada can do to really increase that voice uh, that powerful voice of um of refugees i think is uh, incredibly uh, important um and i think you know the uh, what we're also seeing, and if I can just come back a bit to, 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 to where I am in Niger, this is, as I said, one of the countries that is the poorest in the world. We saw atrocities just at the end of, uh, of March. Uh, with over uh, 130 uh, people that were that were killed due to due to the ethnic violence, unfortunately, that is continuing around the world, and we are so lucky as Canadians to have peace in our country to not be confronted to uh, those insecurities. And what Canada is offering is a sanctuary to those who are persecuted and have been forced uh, to flee their homes. Um, so I guess my plea is to continue to also continue to look at those complementary pathways. Uh, I'm not sure our audience maybe knows exactly what that means, but for instance, even access to our universities, uh, for them to get access to higher education, to be able to come back and contribute in other ways as well, is um, is, is something that is amazing. And uh, I think we, I remember speaking to you this at the time, but you know there are so many con uh, uh, Canadians who also contribute financially to support our cause, uh, both in Canada as well as internationally. And that support means so much to our organization that individuals like you and I, giving out of their pocket uh, to support our cause as well as the government and um, and the communities. So many ways of giving back, so many ways of supporting people that need, uh, need this help, but also so important, and I just want to reiterate that exactly what you said, is they're not helpless. They are part of the solution. They are part of building uh, better as well. Well, Dominique, uh, this has been a, an incredible conversation, and I think a few takeaways that uh, that I will certainly uh, keep as we go forward. The, the the first is what's at stake, and and you being on the ground in Niger, and um, again bearing a witness to. Uh, just how grave the the situation is, um, and and bringing into sharp focus that that lives hang in the balance, um, particularly women and uh, young children who uh, have been traumatized, uh, but who are are still uh, clinging to hope um, because you are there uh, and the UNHCR is there, and by extension. Uh, Canada will be there to uh, hopefully uh, welcome them and resettle them where they can start a new life. So just I uh, want to really thank you for explaining in some detail and, and giving everyone uh, an important update about how important uh, the work is in that particular part of the world. Um, and I think it also inspires us to continue to do more. Um, the last year has been uh, so complicated by the pandemic. Uh, it has disrupted uh, and really turned upside down every aspect of life, uh, whether you're in government or whether you're in the private sector, or whether you're working in the uh, not-for-profit sector trying to help. Um, everyone has had to adjust, and it has been truly remarkable to, uh, to see uh, our work continue in these circumstances through innovation, through technology, um, through alternative ways, but really just a lot of cooperation and goodwill. And, 
and and certainly you know when I've spoken about um, the work that we do in government, I always uh, really take a moment to express my profound gratitude to Canadians themselves who are uh, ultimately there to welcome and to integrate uh, refugees into their communities. And uh, it is with their support that I think that we can continue to show the leadership that is so valued by the UN and again, uh, so many others on the international stage who are who are really who who see full well uh, the need for us to be in this space. And it is my commitment to you uh, and to the UNHCR uh, that uh, I will certainly do everything I can to uh, to be a minister that advances the work when it comes to uh, resettling refugees. I believe our plan this year and for the future reflects that commitment. And now we have to make good on it. Uh, it will not be easy. It will be challenging. Uh, but I'm certainly confident uh, that with uh, with partners uh, like UNHCR, but in particular you, uh, Dominique, and <laughs> and uh, everything that you uh, contribute um, as a public servant, uh, but as a representative of Canada, which uh, I know we're all very proud of, uh, I certainly feel um, optimistic and confident going forward. And I really want to thank you for the opportunity to connect. Uh, I want to wish you uh, de bonne santé. Et de bon voyage uh, uh, quand vous uh, tournez à, à Geneva. Uh, et uh, tous mes meilleures salutations à, à vous et à, à l'équipe à, à la HCR. Mais écoutez, merci beaucoup, euh, ministre Mendincino. Merci beaucoup au Canada pour la générosité. Et comme vous l'avez dit, et on le répète, la générosité des communautés canadiennes euh, de l'Est à l'Ouest, du Nord au Sud du Canada, euh, juste, c'est absolument extraordinaire. On espère que ça peut continuer. Euh, et avec vos efforts, je suis sûre que ça marchera. Et euh, peut-être que ce qu'on pourra faire, c'est un jour, quand je suis de passage au Canada, c'est de rencontrer ce jeune homme euh, qui est un grand fan de Alfonso Davies, de voir où il en est euh, avec euh, son installation au Canada et peut-être qu'Alfonso Davies même peut se joindre à nous. Ça, ça serait, ça serait quelque chose. <rire> euh, mais écoutez, juste grand merci, grand merci euh, à, à tout le travail que vous faites euh, avec nous euh, pour le soutien du Canada pas seulement le ministère de l'Immigration, mais aussi euh, Global Affairs Canada euh, et l'appui qu'on reçoit de Global Affairs Canada. C'est vraiment un travail d'équipe et l'équipe, euh, c'est la communauté, ce sont les réfugiés, euh, c'est le secteur privé, c'est le gouvernement euh, et, euh, et bien sûr euh, tous les individus, individus aussi. Donc, grand merci. Absolument. Merci à toi. Bon voyage, bonne santé et bonne continuation. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir.